Uh, to start with, I first uh, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Actually, uh, this is uh, one of the Uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate is the one of the indication for inflammation in the body. Inflammation uh, that could be caused by the disease, infection, or injury. Whatever, whether it is a cancerous condition or even the menstrual in, in, uh, inflammation also raises the ESR value. So this is a very uh, significant value in in case of uh, hematology to determine the overall, uh, but it is a non-specific, it is not a specific uh, parameter, uh, it is a non-specific matter, but even it is very important, uh, like uh, whenever hematological studies are being done after CBP, uh, like complete blood picture, that's a, ESR is more preferred. E, uh, CBP, uh, then erythrocyte sedimentation rate, also we should, uh, sedimentation in, in the sense, it's uh, ability to precipitate. So if any, if the that uh, if your body is uh, under stress, either it could be a uh, injury or infection or or whatever the situation, then what happens? Cells uh, tend to at attach one by one. The cells will be attached to one another. See, the normal condition is Rolex, where the cells will be overlapping on one another, another and they gets easily dissociated. But here, in this case. Whenever there is a uh, stress conditions are there, it could be injury, infection, sir. In such cases, what happens? The cells gets attached to one another. And uh, once these are attached, their uh, density gets increased. Their biomass gets increased. Once they are getting the uh, increase, they will be precipitated down. They will be set down. And uh, this uh, down rate, rate of settling down, we calculate in terms of erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Yes, sir. And it is a non-specific marker. Actually, to, uh, take it as a, a disease for one condition, but we take ESR as a marker of the prognosis. Uh, see, if the ESR is X and after giving the treatment, if it is reduced or not, that is very important thing. So uh, instead of a diagnosis of disease, this ESR plays very important role in case of your uh, uh, prognosis. So like, uh, Checking of the treatment status or uh, how your uh, treatment of disease is uh, in progress. So, uh, that is uh, ESR is nothing but downward descent of RBCs in a vertical column of blood. That is called as uh, here. Uh, see what happens here in a narrow tube, the dense particles, uh, if in a stress conditions, as I told you, that uh, RBCs gets attached to one another to make a clumps kind of things. So the, as the molecular weight gets increased, then it will be easily settles down at the base by leaving the plasma in the top. So the things required, the items required for this is uh, density of RBC is greater than that of uh, plasma. Even the density of uh, the aggregated RBCs is more than that of normal RBCs. Here, RBC is also the form, I told you, Rolexes are uh, uh, the staggered RBCs on one and above, but they are reversible. They are reversible. They are, uh, even if you add in, in slides, uh, while we discussed in the slides, when you add little amount of normal saline, these uh, Rolexes gets disappeared. S clotted uh, or aggregated RBCs will remain there itself. See, these are the Rolexes. Rolex structures and whereas these are the individual RBCs. Here, Westergren method of uh, estimation RBC is very much uh, popular and very much easy. Very easy to form this one. For this, uh, we'll be using a Westergren tube uh, which measures 30 centimeters in length and 2.5 uh, 2 millimeters in diameter. And it is graduated as uh, 0 to 200 nanometer, uh, millimeters on it. It is uh, measurements are there on that one. And you require a stand for putting this uh, tube. 3.8% uh, of sodium citrate is required as an anticoagulant. And disposable syringe is required for collecting the blood. So 
so first you need to draw the blood drawing the blood you need to dilute it mix it with the 3.8% of sodium citrate whatever you are you are taking here you are supposed to take 4 is to 1 uh, ratio that is uh, 2 ml of blood and 0.5 3.8% sodium citrate that you are supposed to take okay and uh, these uh, suspension whatever the mixture is that you are preparing that you are supposed to suck into the uh, vestigrin tube it is a very easy technique you are supposed to up to zero mark you are supposed to suck the blood uh, the pipettes are available uh, the long pipettes are available and uh, the pipette bulbs are also available you are supposed to use in this case once uh, this is uh, like uh, it comes to mark when uh, suck the blood up to zero mark uh, seal your uh, pipette with your tip there's a hand uh, finger then uh, put it in the for the see like this there is uh, and see what happened uh, air is air should not go into uh, in, into it so that you are supposed to place it in the stand immediately then allow it for one or two hours see you are supposed to take the readings for one hour as well as two hours just use what up to what level the rbc's got settled down they got precipitated or uh, if you are keeping for some time the rbcs are separated and plasma is separated so the time required in one hour how much it gets precipitated or settled down that is esr here so normal it is very simple normal values if a, a like adult male uh, over 3 to 5 uh, the rbc should settle down and uh, see second hour, hour 6 to 10 milli, uh, 10 millimeters you should get whereas females you can see First hour, 8 to 10 uh, millimeters, and uh, second hour, 15 to 20 meters. Information is uh, the first hour, if you are taking 3 to 5 uh, millimeters, if it goes to uh, somewhere over 15, 20, so it is. it indicates that is a, there is a significant inflammation in that person. And uh, with the treatment, some treatment, analgesics or something, if he is taking or whatever the uh, treatment, then if it gets reduced at least from 15 to it comes to 10, that indicates that it is significantly working. This is what I uh, told you in the beginning. Uh, the significance, uh, <clears throat> it is a not a specific diagnostic marker. It is a not a specific. I told you it is a ESR increases in several conditions. It could be an injury or it could be uh, cancer or it whatever maybe. So different stressful conditions, cells will uh, cells will uh, gets uh, aggregated and uh, that will lead into the increased uh, ESR. Whereas it is a good marker for prognostic test. Like uh, if uh, after uh, once the ESR was found to be increased, then you uh, after treatment or uh, if you do a repeated uh, ESR. Then if the ESR value gets reduced, then you can say that uh, uh, the stress or whatever may be it got reduced or not. And the factors determining the rate of sedimentation rate. What are the factors that it decides? One is uh, albumin. Albumin, uh, generally, if the albumin is increased, ESR gets... If the albumin is increased, because albumin should be there in the plasma component. If the albumin is increased, it also, so what happened? Uh, plasma portion gets increased so that ESR gets uh, decreased. Fibrinogen and antibodies with the globulins. If these things, fibrinogen, actually this is this helps in the sedimentation uh, clotting period, clotting process. So what happened? If the globulins and fibrinogen increases as well as the ESR also gets uh, increased. RBC values increases if the rbc count is increased then the esr decreases and uh, physiological factors if the old age uh, see ESRs with old age pregnancy uh, females and menstruation these are all stressful conditions esr decreases in newborns high altitude and males pathological conditions uh, ESR increases in active inflammation as to, uh, whatever uh, inflammations, malignancy, TB, fevers, rheumat uh, rheumatoid fever, 
tissue trauma that is a tissue injury and uh, esr decrease in polycythemia uh, and hyperviscosity of plasma if you dilute uh, the blood so the esr gets red, uh, decrease so this is uh, something about sir next we'll come uh, there is a um, short topic for you anticoagulant anticoagulants will discuss anticoagulant uh, as the term indicates these are the factors or components which prevent the coagulation process which co uh, which prevents the coagulation process actually blood coagulation we discussed in detail uh, the cascades and factors in uh, blood clotting we have discussed in detail so uh, we need to discuss about anticoagulants also few like uh, for systematic systemic therapy see uh, during the uh, the coronary surgery like uh, heart surgeries or uh, uh, vascular surgeries or uh, any this kind of surgeries or any surgery in general the anticoagulants are given while uh, doing the procedures there is a possibility of creating a clot wherever uh, the procedure or surgery is being operated there is a possibility of creating a blood clot over there so this will uh, will circulate in the blood circulatory system and it is there is a possibility of uh, uh, it joining with other blood blood cells and uh, getting its size increase the, so it may create a block in uh, either it is a capillaries or sometimes vessels or heart walls and uh, it may be very dangerous so whenever there is a surgery is being operated generally we use the anticoagulants okay and uh, see uh, some some situations like uh, coronavirus are uh, majority of the viruses viruses uh, they binds to the see uh, blood components like rpc even platelet cells and they will try to uh, make them aggregated so uh, clotting kind of uh, situation they will create so in that condition see if, if there is a blood clot over there that will lead into a lot of uh, problem so we should uh, prevent uh, those uh, clotting process by anticoagulants so see coagulation uh, actually we should make make uh, the hemostasis so there will be there should be a balance in between uh, clotting as well as uh, anticoagulant process so even naturally anticoagulants are there in our body heparin is there heparin is a natural anticoagulant which is released in our body and it tries uh, uh, to maintain <clears throat> the blood flowing but still some conditions like intravenous uh, some sometimes intravenous uh, blood rupturing and uh, <clears throat> some situation due to some disease viral uh, infections blood clots may be created so we are we are supposed to use uh, what you call that uh, anticoagulants we are supposed to use so basically blood clot uh, it consists of uh, platelet cells mashed into fibrin uh, you, you can see the image uh, here so uh, here a web a web like structure like a spider like structure will be created in which the platelet cells as well as rbcs are trapped to make a clot over there in fact uh, the fibrin uh, mess will is created and uh, see the two major components are involved here one is uh, platelet cells and thrombin system thrombin system makes uh, your uh, uh, mesh this uh, whatever the fibrin uh, mesh and uh, the cells uh, platelet cells uh, first and then followed by uh, rbcs will be captured in this one so that uh, blood clot is created platelet cells they are uh, tiny and they are produced in bone marrow in fact we discussed it in uh, the part, cells of uh, rbc and uh, they generally flows in uh, this uh, blood and uh, their work starts there is a damage uh, to the tissue or uh, whenever there is a damage to the blood capillaries or blood vessels so uh, basically uh, whenever there is a no damage these cells will not either even rbc cells also uh exceptional rolex formation but generally they don't attach to one another but uh, because of the same charge is there over the cells as uh, there is a injury uh the cells will lose their charge uh, endothelial whenever there is endothelial damage is there 
the cells will lose their charge and they will stick to one another and here in this process cyclic amp also plays very important role and uh, simultaneously not only uh, the attachment of uh, the platelet cells to themselves they will be attached to the endothelial cells also and uh, the site where uh, the bleeding is taking place there also they will be, they will be attached and now uh, the cascade of see uh, the blood clotting will be taking the thrombin system this is uh, what we discussed in detail but uh, uh, that's a brief we will do so calcium plays very important role uh, for this uh, thrombin system and uh, you got uh, several uh, factors here first uh, surface uh, clotting factor uh, and tissue cl uh, clotting factor these two tissue clotting factor directly it will convert into inactive tenth factor into active tenth factor whereas surface factor it convert 12a uh, 12th factor to activated uh, 12a and then uh, it converts into 11th to 11th a that is active a is generated uh, abbreviated as activated okay so uh, then this uh, 11th activated factor converts in ninth factor into ninth activated factor here the eighth a factor okay this uh, seventh and eighth factors and uh, fifth fifth seventh and uh, this eighth factors these factors plays very important role okay tissues uh, tissue factor directly it will convert into 10th 10th uh, inactivated 10th factor into uh, active 10th factor as well as this uh, activated 7th factor sorry 8th factor also converts uh, the same thing there is a 10th factor it will be activated into 10th a and uh, this 10th uh, factor will convert into and there is a factor 2 that is prothrombin into thrombin that is uh, here directly the fifth factor also will do the same job uh, otherwise this 10th uh, factor in association with fifth factor it this it will be prothrombin will be converted into thrombin and this thrombin is having dual job it will be converting in there is a 12th factor will be activated that actually this is a proteolytic activity it will be cleaved uh, into activated factor here once uh, the 12th factor actively available and this prothrom uh, thrombin is available then the fibrin convert into fibrin this fibrin makes the mesh and this uh, mesh uh, uh, will be trapping the rbc cells into it so the blood clot will be completed so these are uh, the clotting factors different uh, clotting factors uh, we have total 13 factors are there uh, different 13 factors so now we'll come to our topic heparin and this is uh, anticoagulant agent anti different see uh, we are discussing the anticoagulant agents which are being used in therapy for the treatment purpose in lab we'll be using uh, this uh, ther these anticoagulants as well as edta also and even sometimes citrate also sodium citrate also so uh, before uh, covering this one let me uh, do the tip and uh, that's edta we must be using the edta very frequently we'll be using uh, edta in the lab how that edta works edta as a term indicates uh, sorry as you know it is a chelating agent it binds it binds to the divalent cations it binds to the divalent cation you know calcium is a divalent cation so it binds to the calcium and it makes it non available for the clotting process once it is not available then the remaining reaction the activation of there's a initial clotting factor see clotting factor 12 is not taking place if the calcium is not available that uh, 12th factor activation that is a starting factor actually calcium is involved for several process even including the first step also so as the calcium is not uh, available then the clotting process does not take place that's how edta works now heparin heparin as i told you it is a natural uh, anticoagulant and produced by the basophils and uh, mast cells and uh, whenever uh, there is inflammation or base cells uh, this basophils and mast cells are produced and they produces uh, this uh, heparin and uh, this is the structure of hep uh, heparin see uh, it does not in the presence of heparin 
the clot does not forms it does not allows the clot to be formed but whatever the clot formed is there that will not be disintegrated uh, disintegrated means it will not be broken down whatever the clot is created see generally what happened a small clot is created somewhere uh, in our and it moves uh, across the blood and it takes uh, uh, and its size gets en uh, enhanced isn't it but that is very dangerous and uh, uh, some of anticoagulants what they will do they will try to uh, disintegrate or they want to degrade the clot itself some uh, kind of things are there we will discuss later whereas heparin it does not allows uh, further magnification of the clot whatever it is created okay and uh, how long this uh, heparin should be continued in the blood there is a thrombokinase is enzyme is created in the blood and this uh, thrombokinase overlaps uh, heparin so its activity is lost but when we are supposed to use this uh, heparin whenever uh, surgery is required heart is being operated uh, and uh, whenever uh, the blood flow is compromised like uh, disease conditions in such conditions and whenever uh, you are expecting some clot little of uh, clot is there and that should not be enhanced in such cases also we are supposed to use the this uh, heparin and uh, second uh, the most popular drug is a uh, warfarin heparin is not a oral drug it is intravenous you are supposed to uh, give and uh, why because uh, in acid conditions uh, if you take oral in acid conditions it gets disintegrated or degraded or it will lose its activity well, warfarin tablet form uh, warfarin is a, a tablet form what you call your uh, warfarin easily handles uh, ph changes uh, so it, it does not get uh, disintegrated and uh, this effectively works on uh, vitamin k metabolism so whatever the vitamin k mediated process are there it will interfere warfarin so that uh, vitamin k is required for various uh, cofactors it requires various cofactors so whatever the cofactors requiring uh, that vitamin k that will be interrupted with warfarin so that those factors will not be working if those factors are not working then the clotting process does not takes place and one more beauty of this one is uh, here uh, it does not uh, see uh, it in process okay and uh, it stop whatever the clot is formed it uh, the enhancement of the clot does not takes place and uh, here what happened uh, the clot breaking also does not takes place with this help of this one and the side effects are with any anticoagulant the common problem is bleeding with uh, brushing and uh, maybe more uh, uh, anticoagulant activity and that will lead into the bleeding from the gums and sometimes uh, uh, joints and uh, uh, like if you have cut or sometimes piles to such kind of things so you uh, that this uh, coagulant should be given in the controlled condition see the K vitamin works uh, on factor 2, factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10. Factor 2 is a, such a crucial one. Uh, and along with the, that one, it works on the protein C, protein S and protein Z also, which are very important. Protein C is very important for uh, regulating activities. Dibetsan uh, zelate. This is a... other these are actually warfarin is a common drug now in uh, if the surgery is going on heparin is the first drug of choice if you are opening then the heparin is the first drug of choice when the surgery is going on whereas if the, if there is no surgery if the even uh, if uh, the patient is under uh, treatment then in such case warfarin is the best drug and even heparin is also because heparin is very cheaper drug and uh, warfarin is a bit expensive and these are all synthetic drugs they are having their own advantages so dabigtran uh, etaxalate it is a it is a chemical synthesized drug by boringer and uh, 
it is a new oral drug like uh, it, it inhibits the thrombin uh, throm so it is a thrombin inhibitor thrombin is a uh, you know it is a factor 2 and uh, it is a basically it is a pro drug of uh, dabigatran dabigatran is a molecule reversibly inhibits both free and clot bound thrombins even the clot is uh, is there whatever the clot is formed that is also reversed uh, with the help of this uh, dabigatran but uh, the one problem with uh, this uh, reversal see the big clot if it is made into small clots the small clots may be moving in the entire circulatory system that will make into uh, embolism so that may be uh, another criteria but if under the uh, icu conditions uh, in the observations of doctor if you are doing then there is okay uh, rivaroxaban rivaroxaban uh, it is developed by the bayer this is also a synthetic drug so orally uh, orally given small molecule active site uh, directed to 10th a factor that so it inhibits the 10th a factor and uh, the, see here what happened the other drugs if you are taking uh, they interferes with the food and other uh, compounds other drugs also whereas this is not having any side effect, like interaction with food antacid uh, digoxin aspirin uh this enoxaparin uh, the other drugs will not be interacted with this uh, with this one but uh, it is a highly expensive drug anisonodin anisonodin uh, is a brand name of uh, miradone it is a co um, company it is a synthetic oral anticoagulant and an uh, it is a derivative of uh, uh, adenodione and reduces the prothrombin activity of uh, blood and so if the prothrombin is not there then the fibrinogen is not converted into fibrin it prevents the formation of active coagulants like uh, 2 7 9 and 10 and uh, as well as csk uh, this uh, vitamin k also interfered with this one so it is a multi uh, work and ducamarol it is a potent oral anticoagulant act by inhibiting the synthesis of vitamin k and you know vitamin k on factor 7 9 and 10 and uh, in the liver and similarly like you are warfarin and <clears throat> and basically the beauty of uh, dicamarol is it is derived from the uh, kaumarin kaumarin is a uh, alkaloid obtained from there is your uh, what is that paspu you enter haldi ah turmeric uh, yeah so this is uh, uh, decumarol is obtained from uh, this uh, turmeric kaumarin and it is uh, it is believed to be safe when you compare it uh, with this uh, other things um, and uh, throm the uh, thrombolytic conditions also but it is a bit expensive but uh, it is a safe and uh, thrombolytic disease also it is a uh, clot circulating in the blood also in such conditions also it can be used it earlier it was to be considered as a uh, uh, base hydroxy coumarin and the heparin heparin is uh, the first preferred drug because it is cheaper and it is can be used in larger quantity and during the surgeries and uh, it, but it is it should be given only intravenous and in uh, see the problem with uh, heparin Uh, normal heparin is a high molecular weight one, and uh, this uh, in let's see once the thrombokinase is, this heparin will be will be covered with the the activity is lost. So this high molecular weight uh, uh, heparin further may be promoting that uh, clotting of your uh, blood. Once the thrombokinase is released, so supply low molecular is developed whenever the surgeries of heart is being done. whenever the surgeries of heart are whenever the brain operations are being done in such even uh, this can be done uh, subcutaneous injection can be given because as it is a, a low molecular weight it will uh, uh, pass through it plus through the endothelium uh, layer and it can be as a good anticoagulant and uh, this is uh, founda parinux uh, is a given injection once daily and uh, it is a half life period is bit high is founda parinux 
is a half life period the time required for the degradation so one is one injection is quite enough for a day so it maintains uh, good uh, uh, anticoagulation activity whenever you are expecting deep vein uh, thrombosis or pulmonary embolism that means blood uh, pulmonary veins got blocked in such case, uh, cases we will be using this uh, anticoagulant so uh, like uh, anticoagulants anyhow this uh, what are the anticoagulants and their work uh, if you can understand that is a quite enough for me because any new entries no only four now once we finish the anticoagulant now we'll go back to the uh, clotting disorder uh, the disease uh, anemia as we discussed while discussing about uh, the hemoglobin hemoglobin estimation and the different types of anemia as we discussed uh, i have provided the power and uh, now we'll discuss uh, hemophilia there is a blood disorder and it is a genetical disorder see majority of the cases it is a genetical disorder but there are some conditions where it is autosomal disease also some exceptional conditions where it is autosomal uh, condition also so we'll discuss it as a, see uh, 80 to 85 percent hemophilia is a x linked uh, auto, uh, this, uh, sex linked disease Whereas some cases, very uh, one to two percent, it is uh, like uh, uh, now autosomal also. Well, we'll discuss it later. So again, uh, the hemostatic mechanism, like platelet, uh, whenever there is a or whenever there is a cut, or whenever there is a whatever maybe platelet uh, addition, platelets um, are attached to one another because the surface charge is lost and uh, platelet aggregation takes place in the clot form and the uh, clot is stabilized by subsequent addition of rbcs into it and uh, so what happened limitation of clotting to the site of injury by regulating of uh, anticoagulants uh, so see the clot is not uh, made very high larger by the anticoagulants and uh, see natural heparin is there otherwise artificially we will introduce from outside so what happens here whatever the clot is uh, created it is minimized so that uh, the blood flow is not uh, stopped over there so hemostatic mechanism is maintained this is how uh, otherwise if there is a clot over there then the blood should stop there itself hmm? and uh, fibrinolysis uh, takes place and uh, vascular healing will be taking place so the clotting factor again again and again <laughs> we are discussing about these things now uh, just again we'll uh, review as i told you clotting process starts uh, see in two ways one is extrinsic uh, uh, mode and intrinsic mode and uh, intrinsic mode factor there is a uh, will be released and that will be activating the 12th factor and then uh, activated 12th factor will activating the 11th factor this 11th factor will be activating 9th factor and uh, this 9th factor will be activating uh 10th factor okay and here in this uh, case you require uh, there's the eighth factor as well as uh, uh, calcium okay and uh, whereas extrinsic pathway tissue damage uh, there's a tissue damage factor will be uh, along with the factor eight activated it will be converting uh, 10th factor into activated 10th factor created it will be converted into a uh, thrombin with the help of factor 5 and calcium and uh, thrombin uh, along with the factor 13 activated uh, thrombin and uh, this fibrin fibrin uh, is converted into clots and uh, thrombin is converted into uh, it helps in the i told you the uh, thrombin is serine serine protease it clots it uh, cuts the fibrinogen and remove the inactive portion then active fibrin, uh, fibrin is created so in this process this is a normal view of uh, blood clotting pathway whereas ninth factor which is a very important factor and uh, 
factor eighth uh, factor which is a very important factor these two factors are missing in hemophilic uh, disease it's a better if you uh, remember this cascade it is useful for you uh, for anticoagulant clotting as well as hemophilia and ninth and 12th factor if the uh, sorry ninth and eighth factors Eighth and ninth factor; these two factors plays very important role. Even if there is no eighth factor, it cannot do its own. And ninth factor plays very important role. And one more thing: this uh, tissue factor, tissue factor uh, binds with the seventh activated seventh factor, and it activates. Uh, you are here. It works on this uh, activation of ninth factor that is also inhibited in case of hemophilic conditions. uh so hemophilia in the sense the continuously blood flowing condition so how it it should be uh, detected generally platelet count and the platelet morphology see uh, if the is lost if the surface charge is lost the intactness of RF rbc is lost sorry the uh, platelet is lost so if you can see uh, the intact roundness Uh, bulginess of uh, platelets is uh, that is lost that we can identify by microscopy and uh, coagulation profiles are concerned prothrombin time and activation partial uh, the thromboplastin time these two are very important thing along with the uh, bleeding time uh, this this is called as generally coagulation profile generally before the surgery uh, prothrombin time and uh, aptt and bt these are uh, the things the, they are perform and uh, they indicates whether the person's uh, clotting uh, clotting uh, hemostasis is maintained in a proper way or not so bt and uh, bt blotting time ct clotting time bleeding time seeding time just make a uh, puncture we make a uh, prick and uh, blood should ooze from it then with a blotting paper you try to blot away the paper uh, that whatever the blood that is coming out from it don't uh, apply any pressure on it just try to blot it so blotting is in the sense just uh, you put see in the image it is given uh, once uh, the prick is cut see for initial blood you are supposed to remove then keep the blotting paper and continuously blot it on the paper and measure the time and uh, till what time no more blood is coming that is called as bleeding time bleeding that is bleeding blood is coming out of it normally it is 3 to 9 minutes uh, but uh, to a healthy being it should be around uh, 4.5 to 5 minutes so uh, clotting time see we will be taking the blood in a capillary in a small capillary and uh, for uh, after two a little fragment of uh, clot uh, this capillary we are supposed to break and uh, we need to see at what time this uh, clot is created Cl if the clot is created it will it will make see the capillary will not be it will be breaking but it will be uh, it it does not gets detached it will be coming like a thread so it is called less clotting time clotting time is uh, 3.6 minutes generally it it is uh, almost 1 minute less than that of uh, bleeding time Uh, for uh, coagulation profile you need to uh, while sample collecting citrate coagulant uh, you are supposed to use uh, gently mix it and immediate uh, transport you should do and uh, these are the methods uh, that we uh, prothrombin time aptt and tt uh, bt ct bt where we will be doing <clears throat> so coagulation disorders are concerned there is uh, in our syllabus we got only uh, the hemophilia there is hemophilia a hemophilia b and factor 13 deficiency prothrombin deficiency factor 5 <coughs> deficiency factor 7 10th 11th and 12th and uh, parkel deficiency high molecular weight uh, uh, there is a kinningone deficiency and uh, to anti plasma deficiency plasminogen activator inhibitor deficiency these are very rare whereas hemophilia is uh, the frequency is 1 in 5000 to 
one in five thousand to ten thousand is bit high. Okay, and it is a inherited, inherited in the sense genetical. Okay, <clears throat> hemophilia. I'll discuss you about uh, A and B. First, uh, hemophilia is often it is called as disease of kings because it was carried out many members of European royal family, and King Victoria of England was carrier of hemophilia. <clears throat> And uh, it is a uh, see there are two types. It is a X-linked recessive. It is X-linked recessive. See, in case of female, both the X chromosomes should have this gene. Then, uh, then only the female will be expressing this uh, disease condition. Whereas in case of male, only one uh, X chromosome is there. XY chromosomes are there. That's what generally the chances of its expression into male is very high. Okay, and uh, hemophilia A, there is a factor uh, eighth deficiency, and uh, it is a, among the hemophilia, it is eighty to eighty-five percent. Among eighty to eighty-five people, it is uh, hemophilia A. Among the hemophilians, I am talking about not uh, normal population. And hemophilia B, here the factor ninth is deficient. And uh, it, uh, it remaining uh, around uh, 15 to 20 uh, percent uh, will contribute. Uh, in fact, uh, less than one to two, like uh, you can say, uh, 18, uh, 13 to 20 percent, because one to two percent is autosomal. Mutations of the clotting factors uh, genes are responsible here, and uh, here you can see. Uh, in case of uh, if uh, one one chromosome see females if uh, one x chromosome is having mutated gene and uh, for uh, factor this is uh, a factor five uh, factor eight whereas uh, the remaining one is uh, good then she works as a carrier like uh, victoria queen victoria whereas in case of male even though sing uh, single x chromosome it is mutated then there is a possibility of disease Okay, generally affects males on the maternal side because it comes uh, through the uh, X chromosome, and uh, one third number of uh, family history uh, due to mutations. Uh, you can this and types of uh, hemophilias. Hemophilia A, the factor eight, X linked recessive. It is a recessive because X, uh, if if it is there in one, the disease is not expressed. Hemophilia B, uh, ninth factor, and X-linked recessive, same. Hemophilia C, there's an eleventh factor, it is an autosomal recessive. Yes, because if the other chromosome, uh, if it is a good, non-mutated, then there is no, pro no problem, no disease. And uh, parahemophilia, there is a factor 5, and it is, a, it is also autosomal recessive. And uh, for as a genetic student, uh, this is very important for you. And... Uh, See, <clears throat> severe uh, among severe hemophilias, the uh, distributions are uh, fifty percent, and clotting fac factor activities are less than one percent. And moderate uh, generally we classify uh, based on the if the clotting factor is uh, less than one percent, is a severe hemophilia. If the moderate uh, hemophilia, uh, like if we cal classify based on the uh, the factors are in the range of one to five percent, and uh, against that ten percent, and uh, five to ten percent, five to forty percent. If the clotting factors are there among the normal, it is a mild hemophilia, and they are around thirty to forty percent, and they can survive normal life precautions. If uh, with a bit of precautions, they can survive well. <clears throat> Clinical manifestations, bleeding can happen anywhere in the body and uh, following an injury, surgery are uh, rarely spontaneous without anything also sometimes uh, internal bleeding, uh, synovial um, chambers also, uh, the bleeding will be taking place. So this is a, the bleeding takes place. And musculoskeletal bleedings and uh, deep bleedings into joints and uh, muscles and so the blood will get accumulated over there and even sometimes secondary infection states that will lead into a lot of pain in the joints 
and the begin uh, when child reaches uh, the uh, when the when a person gets adult uh, stage then uh, this problem uh, gets more toddler ankle the most right ankles uh, problem later knees and elbow becomes uh, common sites let's see uh, how the blood uh, 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 as the bleed here it gets swelling uh, comes in that heat and swelling comes uh, so it gets enlarged over there so you can see uh the gap in between these two is uh, uh not clearly seen because the rbcs are captured in that area <clears throat> intracranial hemorrhage also like in uh, uh brain also uh, like uh, in the cranium that's a box of uh, brain there also uh, the bleeding takes place hematuria the blood flows in the uh, urine also there is a hematuria and traumatic conditions uh, if uh, there is a cut a small cut also it lead uh, to a lot of uh, blood uh, bleeding and vein punctures uh, generally never uh, iv fluids are being uh, given to the persons normally the uh, this uh, this will take uh, in a proper way but sometimes uh, the vein a lot of uh, hematoma or a lot of uh, see you can see this image this kind of structures uh, vein punctures will created over there so how to diagnose uh, this uh, uh, hemophilia normally the clotting factors are very important uh, in this case the see the clotting factor 8 and fact uh, clotting factor 9 this clotting factor prothrombin time is normal prothrombin is a clotting factor prothrombin is a clotting factor 2 so clotting factor 2 is a normal one so uh, don't do the sf uh, for prothrombin 2 prothrombin uh, pt prothrombin time you are supposed not to do whereas you are supposed to do the aptt which is uh, the sf for the beginning one so biochemical assays are there uh, with the biochemical assay you you can uh, see this clotting factor 8 and 9 can be assayed and which will give you the indication that whether the person is having a hemophilia or not and uh, how to determine whether the baby is a uh, carrier or uh, uh, expressive stage so parental diagnosis uh, we are supposed to do and uh, this family uh, you are supposed to collect and you should do and coagulation based assays uh, <clears throat> but uh, clotting factors accurate uh, we may not be able to do but dna testing is a golden standard it is a accurate test so uh, to particular factor 8 and factor 9 you take the dna of a person and you do a pcr if the gene is intact if uh, the perfect genes are there there is no problem otherwise there is a possibility of uh, the baby to be hemophilic generally we do this uh, not to everyone uh, to the carriers are if uh, if the father is hemophilic or there uh, is a carrier in such cases uh, we'll do this uh, parental diagnosis this is a case uh, see 6 years boy is brought to opd uh, outpatient department with a complaint of recurrent painful swelling of uh, left knee uh, giant since 2 years of age he also has a history of prolonged bleeding from cut sites if any cut is there uh, uh, so uh, left knee joint is swollen and uh, tender it is a tender means uh, uh, hard and uh, investigations are concerned pt uh, prothrombin time is normal aptt is 90 seconds whereas control is 25 seconds and uh, correlated with factor 9 defi uh, deficit plasma so uh, plasma test uh, then uh, it was found that clot uh, clotting factor 9th is deficient so factor uh, Eight assay. If you do, it is less than one person. If it is a factor eight assay, if it is one less than one person, it is a severe hemophilia. Okay. Even the ninth factor is also defi uh, deficit. So it is a uh, kind of hemophilia case. Went to dentist tooth extraction. Developed uncontrolled bleeding following the procedure. How will you manage? So uh, what do he in this case? you are supposed to supply clotting factor 9th and clotting factor 8th if you have immediately otherwise you are supposed to do the the serum uh, uh, the plasma collect the blood blood 
the plasma will be there the plasma you are supposed to give to the uh, person if you don't have the clotting factor uh, ninth and eighth so how to manage uh, the hemophilia it should to be uh, like it should be see the clotting factor is deficit if it is uh, moderate level or mild level you should uh, clotting factors uh, injection of clotting factors or uh, plasma is not required you need to do basic things in lifestyle modification and uh, therapy you should consider so inhibitors uh, uh, you are supposed to use prophylactic uh, factors you are supposed to use and transfusion of transmitted uh, infections you are supposed to check let's see hemophilic uh, management lifestyle modification you should make sure that injuries are not taking place any there's a contact basis based games you should not play contact wherever there is a possibility of uh, injury or cut such kind of things you should avoid avoid contact sports like swimming cycling uh, and this should be swimming and cycling where there is no much uh, uh, but even if you are falling down from the cycle also there is a possibility of injury uh, but without uh, falling down if you can do something then there is a possibility and there is a good thing okay so wherever there is a possibility of damage to your tissue that such kind of things you should not do and uh, pharmacological agents factor concentrators uh, cryo precipitate like uh, uh, precipitates you can use uh, not in the mild conditions that is only in the severe conditions we are supposed this uh, uh, pharmacological agents for the treatment like factor 8 and factor 9 uh, and factor 8 half life period is 8 to 12 hours only and factor 9 18 to 24 hours but uh, uh, see here the factor 9 is uh, more preferable actually and it is having more life span also but uh, if you are using both the thing the if you are see if uh, surgery procedure is going on and uh, if the bleeding continuous bleeding is going on then what happens then you, both the things you are supposed to use Cryo uh, precipitate uh, forms. Uh, These uh, clotting factors are the plasma is uh, collected and uh, it is uh, precipitated uh, at low temperature and that is used in emergencies. This is a frozen plasma. And uh, dismopressin. Dismopressin is a uh, uh, only in mild hemophilia A condition uh, where the factor eight is deficit. Factor eight is deficit <coughs> and infective in several. Uh, hemophilia it is uh, it is not uh, much effective in several cases but it is some extent it is useful and uh, it is not useful in factor b because in factor b ninth factor is deficit there and nasal spray is available for this one and uh, tranexamic acid it is a uh, anti fibrolytic agent uh, so whatever the lot of clot is formed that will not be uh, broken down so this helps in that way so sometimes analgesic ice packs also helps in uh, uh, immobilization of uh, the cells over there and uh, some extent uh, physiotherapy also helps in case of your blood clotting process and some inhibitors uh, also we can use and uh, whenever the hemophilic uh, severe hemophilic conditions are there uh, it should like it is involved with uh, several uh, conditions uh, like ortho and uh, neuro and uh, sometimes nephro so, so you need to have a icu set up uh, for taking care of this uh, uh, severe patients this is about hemophilia i'll share you this uh, powerpoints and uh, this is several times you have you must have studied now we'll discuss about uh, blood borne diseases because hematology we are discussing uh, the diseases are pathogens which are transmitted through the blood it takes another uh, 10 15 minutes just bear with me then we'll wind up so uh, this several uh, diseases are uh, spread through the blood see it is not uh, blood borne diseases are not only transmitted through the blood but it could be any body fluids there is a misconception that only through the blood uh, even through the 
see uh, hiv is transmitted not only with the blood but there is a uh, fluids like uh, saliva semen uh, this kind of things uh, it will be spreading any body fluids spreading we consider it as a blood borne pathogen or blood borne disease this very important thing just you should remember <clears throat> So microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria that are even sometimes uh, what you call your par parasites, protozoans that can cause the disease in people transmitted through the contact with blood or body fluids, bodily fluids. And uh, it could be through blood, semen, vaginal secretions, cerebrospinal fluids and synovial fluids also. But remember here the sweat is not included. Sweat is a, not a component of See, sweat is a, uh, from tissue it is created, not from the blood. So, uh, the HIV and uh, other diseases, they are not spread through the sweat, but they are spread through the blood, semen, vaginal secretions, uh, cerebrospinal fluid and synovial fluid. And uh, so, through the contact, whenever the person to person contact is there, and in this contact, when these fluids are coming in, uh, in, uh, in re when these fluids are coming contact to one to one another, uh, so semen, uh, see some some are added here, semen, vaginal secretion, cerebrospinal fluid, synovial fluid, pleural, pleural fluid is a fluid in uh, pleural cavity is the cavity in, uh, covering to the lungs. Two layers are there. In between two uh, layers, there is a fluid which is called as fluoral fluid peritoneal fluid peritoneal fluid is uh, at the base to your abdomen and uh, amniotic fluid saliva these are the things uh, through which the disease gets uh, transmitted and uh, skin provides a, a barrier actually skin does not uh, allows the this uh, cast two agents to enter for uh, but what happened due to the open source uh, are cut uh, abrasions, acne, or any sort of damage uh, which caused uh, to the skin uh, that leads into the this uh, trans transfer of this uh, mm, blood bone diseases and mucous membranes uh, which are there in the eyes, nose, and mouth they are also susceptible for the blood bone pathogens. Hepatitis A. Hepatitis A gets transmitted only through the eyes, nose, and mouth. Remember, there's a mucus. Uh, um, if you go to the uh, swimming, where uh, the early season, early rainy season, uh, this hepatitis A virus is predominating. So if you go for the swimming, then the, whatever the freely really available uh, hepatitis A virus is there, that will enter into the mucus membrane through the eyes, nose, and mouth, and happily enters into your body. Okay. And uh, uh, see, the uh, hepatitis B and HIV, these two are a lot of work is being done, and uh, it is considered to be the blood bone uh, very dangerous. And a uh, lot of uh, people are uh, to the actually to uh, healthcare personnels, to healthcare personnel, actually, this hepatitis B and HIV, these two are creating a lot of problem. But apart from this, hepatitis C, hepatitis A, D, tuberculosis, syphilis, also. Uh, uh, the blood borne diseases which are creating tuberculosis. How the tuberculosis is a blood borne disease? I I need uh, the explanation by Viswas once the presentation is completed. Okay. So, what you should do to prevent uh, the blood borne disease uh, transmission? You should uh, wash the hands uh, properly and uh, use uh, non abrasive material soap. And flush mouth, nose, eyes uh, for uh, 15 minutes if the blood is splashed in mucous membranes. Re uh, remove clotting that is uh, contaminated as soon as possible. And uh, report uh, exposure to your supervisor if at all, if you got in the fill out the accident injury report and request blood testing. Hepatitis B vaccination is uh, required. So, hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is a virus that causes infection and inflammation of liver. It is uh, the cirrhosis it creates, and uh, even secondary malignancy also reported with, because of hepatitis B. And you know, uh, liver is a 
uh, is an organ of detoxification. And once the detoxification is lost, a uh, lot of, uh, see, the entire body uh, accumulates with the toxins. Okay. So um, this is a very dangerous problem. It is transmitted through the blood to blood here and can lead to serious conditions such as cirrhosis and liver cancer. It can survive uh, in dried blood on hard surfaces up to seven days or more. So it will survive for a longer period. Uh, seven days is a very long period. And after even once it is dried, even on your clothings, other things also it will survive. Uh, so whenever uh, when you go for a new area or hostel kind of things, using uh, the blankets and um, uh, such kind of things is the towels and such kind of things is not advisable because of hepatitis B. <coughs> So it transmits uh, through the blood, body tissues, saliva, semen, vaginal secretions, see here urine also, and the breast milk also, hepatitis B virus gets transmitted. Uh, how it gets transmitted? Puncture wound, uh, like whenever the sharp punctures are created, and uh, whenever the bodily fluids come in contact uh, with it, then what happened? This. Uh, Hello. Then uh, this uh, through the cut, this uh, bodily fluids through the bodily fluids uh, virus that enters into the circulatory system, uh, and then somehow it reaches to the liver. Even if it is entering through the uh, mucous membrane like eyes, nose, and mouth also, so that also uh, it goes into the capillaries. And from the capillaries, it goes to the circulatory system, and from there, it goes to the liver, and where they will, uh, it will do its activity. So hepatitis, uh, uh, see, the best is uh, the the methods that it, how it gets uh, contaminated or spread, unprotected sex, intravenous drug use, uh, blood transfusion. These are the main things generally. So these are the things how it gets uh, contaminated. So we should print symptoms of hepatitis B. It's a uh, mild, feverish conditions, fatigue, um, stress conditions, weakness, nausea, abdominal pain, headache, fever, and um, jaundice because of liver uh, is associated, and uh, darkened urine, urine because uh, uh, toxins, a lot of toxins are being released here. And hepatitis B vaccine, hepatitis B is, uh, you know, uh, vaccine is available. Uh, it's the best vaccine. I think uh, now um, government has made mandatory for the hepatitis B vaccine because it, it is creating liver cancer and uh, very dangerous. And uh, doctors is uh, it is mandatory, it is compulsory for uh, medical uh, healthcare people. But apart from that, also uh, it is a better to take uh, vaccination. So the antibodies will develop. And uh, these antibodies will uh, take care of subsequent infections of hepatitis B virus. And uh, three shots are given for vaccination. So after one, uh, first after first dose, uh, second dose is given after one month, and then after five months, the third dose is given. And uh, these three doses, uh, generally you should take it in deltoid uh, muscle. See uh, this, uh, that's uh, the upper portion of your arm. You are supposed to take uh, this vaccination, and uh, you know the vaccine should not be taken if you are allergic to yeast. What does it mean? Because it is a recombinant vaccine that is produced in yeast. So some uh, yeast derivatives, uh, especially cell membrane mannan, will be there. So if you are resistant, if you are allergic to yeast, so better we should not take this one. Even uh, any vaccine, if you are allergic, see uh, now. Corona vaccine is being uh, given, and uh, it is um, uh, immunocompromised persons. And uh, um, for uh, if you if your person is sick in such cases of conditions, you are not supposed to take this vaccine. But uh, now nowadays we have subunit vaccine. Uh, if you are taking in deltoid muscle and subunit vaccine, the hepatitis B vaccine is subunit vaccine, so you can take. There is no problem. HIV, human immuno 
deficiency virus and uh, the disease caused is called as acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and it is not single disease but it is a syndrome group of uh, diseases that's what it is called as syndrome and uh, basically it depletes uh, the immune system it reduces uh, t and b lymphocytes and uh, basically it uh, even the memory cells also lost because of uh, uh, this hiv uh, and uh, see basically outside the immune cells t and b cells it does not survive uh, and uh, even it does not survive if you uh, hard surfaces it will not survive because the fatty membrane is there around the virus like your coronavirus the fatty membrane is there over the virus hiv virus as well as coronavirus so they does not survive for a longer time on the hard surface even in sunlight uh, very easy to kill and uh, for hiv there is no vaccine available you know that one hiv spread when is uh, infected blood semen vaginal fluids breast milk gets in, uh, into the blood stream of another person sexual contact sharing needles pregnancy child birth and wedding uh, and workplace exposure blood and body fluids that is uh, dangerous things for hiv and this is a very important thing that you should have, uh, remember hiv does not spread through the casual contact hello chalo and uh, saliva through the saliva uh, sweat and split tears air and insects this uh, hiv virus does not spreads through these modes hiv symptoms are concern uh, weakness fever sore throat nausea actually uh, this uh, hiv uh, apart from the weakness and fever it does not create any uh, problem but secondary uh, infections whenever uh, see you system is uh, uh, drop down so through, uh, generally a lot of uh, bacterias are there in our throat so as uh, the immune compromise even this uh, bacterias which are very weak in general they will uh, try to create a sore throat or uh, throat pain kind of things nausea and headache uh, diarrhea see normally e coli helps uh, to uh, decompose lactose uh, milk lactose and uh, it helps a lot uh, in our industry but uh, even that uh, lacto uh, this uh, e coli creates a diarrhea in case of hiv uh, people white coating on tongue uh, because fungus grows on, on it and weight loss uh, swollen lymph glands uh, these are the, some of the symptoms of uh, hiv and uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome as i told you it is a group of uh, symptoms uh, uh, we call it as uh, what we can see is uh, swollen lymph glands in neck underarms and the groin area uh, because uh, the lymph glands whatever are there they gets um, whatever the this uh, bacteria rich uh, virus rich lymph uh, t and b lymphocytes over there so that's what they are swollen recurrent fever persistent headache and uh, night sweats and constant uh, constant fatigue and persistent diarrhea uh, these are the signs of aids hepatitis c uh, hepatitis c uh, was first discovered 1989 identified not dis identified the most common cause of uh, chronic liver disease cirrhosis and cancer see hepatitis b we discussed actually this uh, the severity of hepatitis c is less but this is more dangerous than the hepatitis b hepatitis b is very common actually uh, in metros wherever the municipal water is being used there the hepatitis b is almost 80% whereas hepatitis c is almost 10 to 14% but the severity of hepatitis c is 80% than that of your uh, hepatitis b hepatitis c is very dangerous uh, just uh, that creates uh, hepatitis b in very uh, immunocompromised persons it causes cirrhosis whereas this not only with cirrhosis it causes liver cancer very dangerous hepatitis c most commonly occurs in people who have received blood transfusion uh, and uh, shared needles had tattoos uh, piercing and uh, here the risk of uh, sexual transmission appears to be small in this case uh, but with, uh, there is no experimental proof uh, sufficient no evidence that it can be transmitted by casual contact through food or uh, by coughing sneezing and transmission from mother to child appears to be uncommon 
so placental transfer is not uh, there for this hepatitis c uh, over four, uh, 4 million people are known to be infected uh, in only us uh, with this one and uh, the virus is very uh, see the virus can be uh, remain undetected in the body for years and most hepatitis c infections become chronic and lead to liver uh, disease and liver failure there is no vaccine for hepatitis c also c there is no vaccine uh, and uh, there are new treatment regimes which are very costly and because uh, for this one interferon is being used hepatitis c interferons are being used and interferons are very uh, expensive interleukins and interferons and uh, the symptoms of hepatitis c are kinds of appetite appetite loss the loss of uh, appetite fatigue nausea vomitings and vag uh, stomach pain and the muscle and joint pains jaundice uh, see uh, there's a bile bilirubin and bilirubin they are accumulated there uh, as the liver is not functioning properly and they are released into the circulatory system they accumulates and so that uh, eyes will appear eye skin they will appear into uh, yellow color even if you wash your hands also it will lead into the yellow color yellow yellow skin yellowing of white uh, of the eyes and dark urine and hepatitis a and b hepatitis a is a very common uh, especially in india like part of the life who would have exposed to the uh, especially in the villages uh, metros also because of uh, municipal water we are consuming and uh, most common in children often spread by cat uh, or poor hygiene may sexual uh, there is no uh, see somebody says that uh, sexually uh, intercourse also spreads this but uh, d there is a proof but a there is no proof uh, actually d is a uh, it is a particle of hepatitis b virus uh, d is considered as a as a imperfect partial component of b so if the d is there along with the b then the chances of disease is going to be very high so in general in viruses uh, hepatitis virus uh chicken pox hiv these are the things which spreads through the blood borne diseases bacteria meningitis tuberculosis food poisoning and fungi athlete's foot ringworm protozoa malaria dysentery parasites abdominal pain and anemia so now
Sir, when the books will be issued, sir. 